Bill is going to look at processing our Milky Way images from a shoot in Ballydewan in the Copper Coast in Watford. Now, this tutorial is going to go through aligning both an exposure for the sky and the foreground. I will go through my star reduction technique, my color grading technique, and adding some star glow as well. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, it would be handy if uh, you had two separate exposures. So you had a separate exposure for your foreground, which is generally a longer exposure at a lower ISO. And also you had a separate exposure for your sky. Now that can be a single exposure for your sky, or it can be a stacked exposure. In this case, I'm actually just using one single exposure. I did shoot uh, seven sequential shots, um, but I haven't stacked them yet. And to be honest, I looked at the raw file of the single exposure and there's plenty of detail in it for this video, okay? So if you do want to check out some of my other videos on stacking um, for foreground and stacking for sky using square, I will link them below as well. Now, to open my files, go to file, so I'm in Photoshop, obviously. Go to File, Scripts, and Load Files in the Stack. This is one way to do it. And go to Browse. And I have my work saved here already. So this is my foreground shot, which is a long exposure shot uh, for like two minutes. And I saw 3200 f2.8, I think. And my sky then is 15 seconds, I saw 6400 at 1.8. So I'm gonna select the two of them and hit enter click ok wait for them to open there we go and now they are opened for us in two separate uh, exposures but one on top of the other sometimes if you open them they'll be in two separate windows okay so now we have them nicely stacked um sometimes when i'm shooting astrophotography, photography i will move around and stuff like that uh, to get a better composition but in this case i literally just shot my foreground didn't move the camera and i shot my sky so there's very little movement if any between there's actually none so usually you would have to do some alignment but in this case there's none okay in this case as well sometimes it's easier to blend a sky that has nothing in it so for my sky exposure here I actually do have the cliffs and the, the stack but the fact that I didn't move the camera they'll blend nicely with the foreground um, and sometimes it's easier if you just shoot a plain sky with nothing in the foreground okay so enough rambling move your foreground down to the bottom okay and let's talk about a process called matching so matching is basically when you blend two exposures in this case one for a foreground and a sky and you match them in terms of color balance and exposure to try and get them to look natural. So I'm gonna make my sky layer invisible. I'm gonna select my foreground layer. I'm gonna go up to select and sky. Absolutely fantastic tool that has saved me many, many minutes and hours of editing. So it's made a very decent selection here. And if I just make my sky layer visible and I go down here and put a white layer mask over it. And to be fair, that is not bad. A lot of people will probably be happy with that. Um, I'm not because I don't like this dirty, warm hue in the water here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Control or Command. Okay. Um, or just Control, sorry. And I'm going to convert that to a smart object. So right click on a layer, convert to smart object. I'm going to go to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. The reason I convert that to a smart object is if I go in here to camera raw and I make a couple of changes, right? And I click OK, I can double click on that smart object and go back into camera raw and my changes will still be there. Whereas if it was if it was a single file with no smart object attached to it, all my sliders will be reset when I go in to camera raw again. So you're kind of you're doubling over yourself basically so always make something a smart object if you're going to be processing it in photoshop so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to bring down the temp here get that kind of brown hue out of the water all right i mean so so look there's the 24 mil f2 and 105 seconds so at 6400 that's my foreground and i mean the Nikon sensors never cease to amaze me. Like 6400 single exposure, 
and it really isn't that noisy now sometimes i will shoot multiple exposures and i'll stack them using medium this was taken on a workshop so i am running the workshop i do not have much time to shoot myself because obviously i have to cater for all the clients so this was just one exposure i got time to fire off if i want i can go down here and do a slight bit of noise reduction um just like that i don't want to soften too much okay so back to my thing here so i like the color balance i'm gonna add a bit of contrast and i'm gonna bring down my highlights slightly and i'm gonna up the shadows okay i'm gonna click ok on that not bad now i'll show you what i mean see when i click here double click on this camera raw filter all my sliders are still there in the exact same place if i hadn't converted smart object they would have all been reset okay so i'm actually going to that's not bad for foreground i'm actually going to now convert my sky layer to a smart object the beauty of this now is that i'll only be editing the actual sky itself so I'll convert so now it's only going to affect the sky because i have a mask i've masked out the foreground um i'm gonna bring this down to match that there i'm gonna bring up my highlights bring down my blacks shadows uh yeah and i'm gonna increase the clarity on the stars and a bit of dehaze to bring out more detail in the milky way um i'm also gonna put a radial filter over this milky way here just to affect that part so i'm gonna down the white or blacks up the whites i'm gonna cool it slightly and a bit of dehaze again bring a bit of clarity brings out more detail too much okay so that is our blend done okay now some of you would probably be like that's obviously perfect i'm totally happy with that and if you are that's absolutely brilliant now i'm going to move on to the star reduction okay so i'm going to hold shift option or command or control so shift option command e so on pc it will be shift alt control e and i'm going to merge them into one layer okay now i'm going to duplicate this layer and i'm going to call this star reduction click ok now i'm going to convert this to a smart object as i always do now for the star reduction this is my favorite part so i'm going to go to my channels here and my rgb so if you grab that rgb there and drop it into this kind of broken circle that makes a selection of all the bright highlights in the image okay what i want to do now is go up to select modify and expand and you want to select one pixels here so basically just expands the selection and again go up to select modify and feather now this feathers it out so basically you always want to go half of what you expanded it by so if you expanded it by two you want to go one pixels i expanded it by one pixel so i'm going to go 0 0.5 and that just makes it a bit more even now we want to hide the marching ants the selection we don't need to see them so i just hit Control or command h the selection is still there but the marching ants are gone now if i go to filter and other and minimum you want roundness selected here and radius i would never usually go past one or 1.5 maybe 1.5 we'll see what that looks like okay click okay again the beauty of doing a smart filter here or sorry a smart object is that i can double click okay if i don't like it and go back in now i'm quite happy with that um, i love the effect the star reduction gives us now you have lost detail in your milky way so the beauty of photoshop you go down here and put a white mask over you get your black brush so you press b for your brush tool go down here and select your black foreground color um basically generally 30 percent i'm paying back in the lovely 
detail in the Milky Way. Just like that. You can see the before and after. Huge difference. Okay, and even if you want to uh, paint out the Milky Way again, a small bit of it, go back to white and just, just like that. But I kind of like to keep a bit of the stars and the detail in the Milky Way, especially around the core area, just like that. Okay, excellent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some star glow, especially to the constellations, this constellation here. Can't remember the name of it and also these stars here so put a blank layer mask or a blank layer sorry create a new layer i'm going to call this star glow change your blend mode to soft light now if you don't want to do this that's absolutely perfect you can skip ahead or you can rewind or do whatever you like i'm just going to show you my workflow and um, press b for your brush tool okay change your opacity to 30 percent and foreground color to white. Now there's loads of different ways to do this. Some people might select a color to match the color of the stars, that's absolutely fine. I just generally go with white. Bring the brush right down to the star size. And then just tap. It might not look like much now, but It makes a nice little fix. That's probably too big now for those stars. Come up here to this constellation. Okay, and I'm just painting. No, I'll do this for only a few. You can do as many as you want. Generally, you kind of do the stars that might stick out. So if I toggle this on and off, you can see the difference. Okay, really, really great way to make stars pop. Now I'll do this without zooming in, which is often tricky. Couple there, sort of the brighter stars that shine. Okay, it's always good to do them with. Couple of places there in the Milky Way itself. If I was doing these, I probably would select a pink color just to match the color of the of the nebula within the Milky Way itself. You know, but look, you get the idea. This is just showing you my process. Okay, so one last one up there. Excellent. There's a star glow. Very subtle, but really, really effective. Um, okay, so again, Shift, Shift, Alt, Command, E. Sorry, I'm trying to remember the PC ones as well. Shift, um, Alt, Control, E, and then Mac is Shift, Option, Command, E to merge it onto a new layer, okay? Now, what I'm doing here is called destructive editing, meaning that when I go onto a new layer here, I actually can't go back and change anything. So if you want, maybe look up working with um, groups and smart groups in Photoshop so that you can go back and change something if you don't like it. I'm so used to editing now, I'm kind of fairly comfortable with everything and where it is, so I generally don't need to go back on, on any of my edits, you know. Um, this here is actually just haze and the horizon, I'm just after realizing, so I probably, I can, up the blacks there a small bit just to make the blend a bit more natural but to be honest it, it's not really bothering me that much um not much else left to do i'm gonna go to my adjustments here and i'm gonna select the curves layer i'll just bring my panel down and i'm gonna pull the curves now you might think that's gone too dark again the beauty of photoshop what i'm going to do there is i'm going to um control or command i which inverts the layer so basically the layer is now hidden by a black mask and if I select the white brush with 30 to 40 percent opacity I can paint in that curves layer and basically that's that's after just bringing a bit more detail out in the Milky Way you know it just brings a bit more contrast into it um, color correction then I use color balance here so it depends kind of in the mid tones if you want to go for a more kind of a ready look or if you want to go towards the aquas um, generally I stick to the reds and the yellows okay so bring up your mid-tone slightly there down to the yellows and highlights okay I would generally go for a blue or kind of a tone like this if I toggle that on off a bit more of a magenta in the sky okay that is very much personal preference now so 
do do with that as you please the last thing i'll do then um again this is personal preference i'm gonna combine onto one layer i'm going to convert that to a smart object filter blur and gaussian blur now this is the art and effect there's loads of different ways to do this okay loads of different ways so if you want to kind of add a bit of dreaminess to the image a bit of art and okay bring it back slightly just a bit of softness you might like it you might not okay sometimes it's nice sometimes it isn't i don't really feel like it's working great enough for that so i'm going to delete it i think it looks better without it so no harm experimenting um i'm going to do a couple of other things here so i'm going to go into camera raw for a second so again i just brought onto a new layer convert a smart object filter camera raw filter um i'm going to reduce the white balance once more okay and i want to actually bring out that milky way touch more okay toys now if you as you can see there if it's kind of affecting too much of this and you want to make it a bit more targeted okay then delete that and then go with a brush tool you know brush tools can be a bit a bit easier a bit more targeted just like that okay something very simple and from here on now it's personal preference okay i'm quite happy with that quite happy with the detail it's nice and sharp, very little noise. For single exposure, I'm very, very happy with that. Stars are perfectly sharp. Um, yeah, that's a, a very nice image. So that is my kind of, a, I suppose, a full editing workflow really for an astrophotography image. Um, hopefully you took something from that. Like I didn't crop anything there. Probably if I was going to crop it, God, what would I do? Let's just see. I might bring it down slightly crop something like that maybe put the stack on my on my third grid there if I'm, I can't cut not a rock there now but nothing I can do something like that maybe get the full arch of it in not the full arch I get the um, the full band of the Milky Way what we can see yeah that's quite nice that's quite nice. One thing if I, I do like doing, sorry no, I'm kind of rambling, but if I go into camera off filter again, I'm gonna pull a gradient down from the top of the sky. Now not too much, but just give it a small bit of framing, just like that. And do the same from the bottom of the image. No, in your gradient. Same from the bottom of the shot. It just kind of draws the eye into the center. Just like that, you know. Bit of contrast. Bang. Job done. And that's, um, yeah, that's my full edit. There you go, before and after. Okay, for an actual photography image. Any questions, please let me know. Um, I would encourage you to check out other videos on stacking foregrounds using medium mode and also stacking sky images using sequator. Okay, I will do a separate video solely editing the just a Milky Way sky, um, or I might do one on like a full sky replacement. So, like this one was quite, quite easy because basically the images were perfectly aligned. Okay. Any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.